this could potentially be the most shoddiest video I've ever made and I'm so sorry you guys. Um, so let me explain. First of all, right now as I'm filming this, it is March 10th, 2022. I am 12 days post-op. I'm doing great. Um, keep an eye out for my two-week update coming very, very soon. But in this video that you're about to see, um, you guys are going to see me about 44 hours post-op. I'm in my hospital room in Tijuana, Mexico in this next clip um, and I just walk you through the majority of of surgery day. Now, unfortunately, for whatever freaking reason, I'm so irritated by it. I've lost some footage. I don't know how it happened. I've looked in my iCloud, recently deleted. I cannot find the footage. Um, but I already had a video edited, ready to edited, edited and ready to go while I was in Tijuana, and I tried to export it um, while I was on my way home, flying home. And for whatever reason, like something went wrong, drastically wrong. I can't find the footage, but I definitely didn't want to try to sit here and explain surgery day in present time because it's already been 12 days and I've forgotten a lot of little details too. So I want to make sure that I keep the original clips. Um, and then after you guys watch the original clip from when I was 44 hours post-op, then I'm going to jump in present day and kind of finish it off. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to include lots of video clips and pictures and stuff like that for you to see as I talk about my experience and stuff like that. Um, and I'm sure there's a couple of things that I missed as well. So I'll probably pop in and explain some extra things as well. So without further ado, let me go ahead and get you guys to my original video. Um, and then I'll pop in here a little bit later and finish it off. All right, let's see how easy it is to sit in this low chair. <sighs> Probably not easy. Let's just see if I can do it without. Uh, I did it. Oh gosh, now I have to scoot it up. How am I gonna do this? Let me readjust my pillows here. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm alive. I'm alive and well. Whew, we're gonna talk about surgery today. Hey everyone, it's Ashley with me, myself, and VSG, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. If you are new and you'd like to follow my weight loss journey or learn more about the um, gastric sleeve surgery that I just had here in Tijuana, Mexico, and the bariatric center and all that, be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and check out some of the other videos that I've made before this one. Um, and as always, if you guys have any questions at all, I'm an open book with this whole process, um, so comment them down in the section below. But today we're going to talk about surgery day. Um, so for the record, today is February 28th. It's about 4.15 p.m., um, and I'm going on about 44 hours post-op. So I had my surgery Saturday, February 26th around, um, I want to say it was close to 8.30 or 9 p.m. So not a definite, but it was around that time frame. And um, just want to give you guys kind of a whole rundown on how the day went. My experience, um, I am now discharged from the hospital. I was discharged this morning and brought back to my hotel. Um, I'm in a completely new hotel room though, so I'll show you guys that as well. Um, I'll show you the view, I'll show you my incisions, and we're just going to chit chat. Um, I ordered my room service because, um, you know, you got to stay hydrated, you got to keep that little tiny tummy full, even though it is a little tiny tummy. Um, so I've got my apple juice. I'm going to take a small sip of that because it's going to take me a while to get through all of this. Um, honestly, I'll probably not even get through all of my broth before my popsicle melts. So that'll be sad. Um, I'm still very gassy. So if you see me like burping myself or just patting myself, um, try to keep the burps to a minimum, but that's just the reality of the surgery. And you guys know I'm keeping it real. So um, let me just start from the beginning, I guess. So um, Saturday was when I filmed my last video that you guys have already seen. That was my video about like my experience the first day coming here and getting all my pre-ops and stuff like that. Um, and that was about noon when I had to go back down to the EOC office and lobby. So um, that was Saturday. I went down at noon. Um, we were told that we weren't going to leave until around 4 p.m., but that was kind of back and forth. They were telling people different things. I think they were just trying to get um, the schedule situated and everything. So um, I've noticed that they will tell you one thing and something else happens normally for the better. So I think what they're trying to do is not get your hopes up. So when they told us 4 p.m., they knew there was a good chance it would be sooner. Um, 
but I mean, I, I appreciate that. I would rather be told that it's going to be later and it happens sooner rather than them say it's going to be two o'clock and it's really five o'clock. You know what I mean? So that didn't bother me at all. Um, got to keep in mind that, um, you really have to keep an open mind and stay patient during this whole process because there are so many people here just like you having the same exact thing done. Um, and it is a process. There's only so many people who can handle, um, all of us coming for the surgery. So like I said, in my last video, stay extremely patient. Um, these people work very hard and they do have a system, they do have a flow, um, and you've just got to trust the process. That's what I keep telling myself is trust the process. So I got down there, they told us four o'clock. Um, we ended up being called at about two, two thirty. So they took a group of, um, me, another woman and two men to Baja hospital from the hotel. So we packed up all of our stuff in the van, um, went over to Baja and then we were placed in this holding room. Now it was kind of an odd, like awkward situation because we were standing off to the corner and there was a bunch of Spanish speaking people in the room um, having their nutrition class. And we stood there. El músculo, como cuando tienen cólicos las mujeres, es lo mismo, el músculo se contrae y da dolor. And we stood there probably a good 30 minutes. Um, eventually the guys were called by a nurse to go upstairs on the elevator. Um, and then a little bit more time passed and us girls were called to get on the elevator to go up with the nurse. And, um, they called the boys just to like get them situated in their hospital room and stuff like that, get them checked in. So, um, it was finally our turn. And the, the woman that I was paired up with, her name is Yaniva. She's amazing. Um, we are definitely, you know, VSG sisters for life. We bonded like you wouldn't even believe. And so this gas is unreal um i am extremely blessed to have had her as a roommate so if you're watching this yaniva like god gifted me with you for sure because she was just amazing we had some great conversation um as a matter of fact the video that i filmed the day that i went um to the hospital for surgery i guess yeah that would have been saturday i had intended on um editing the video and get it posted for you guys but like I told her, I was like, yeah, I was gonna edit this video, but my roommate was too amazing and we had just some great conversations. So I didn't even get a chance to edit the video. So by the time you see that one, I already had surgery. And then of course you're gonna see this one and I've already had surgery as well. So she was just amazing. So she ended up being my roommate um, and she brought her mother along, which was great. Um, Yaniva and her mother are both Spanish speaking, which worked really well because these nurses do speak Spanish and sometimes there is a little bit of a language barrier. Um, you get through it though, if you don't have someone in the room with you who is Spanish speaking that can translate for you. Um, I recommend getting Google Translate on your phone. It's just an app um, and it works really well and the nurses know how to use that as well too. So, um, so we were taken upstairs and we were um, spoken to by a gentleman named Conrad. He was super, super sweet. Um, he told us exactly what we needed to do. He told us to get completely undressed into our gown um, and basically it's just a waiting game. He said that um, the internal doctor would come talk to us. So he's kind of like the aftercare doctor. Um, Dr. Ortiz is strictly the surgeon. So the aftercare doctor will come in um, if there were to be any complications or anything like that to assess our, um, our you know, situation, whatever's happening. So um, he ended up coming in. He was a very kind gentleman. He asked a lot of questions about like our health history and if we've ever had surgeries or anything like that, um, just to kind of get a grasp on what kind of risk we could be going under anesthesia. Um, um, the only, you know, only problem that I really have is frequent headaches. So, um, I've never been under anesthesia before. This was my first time. And, um, maybe I expressed it to you guys in the last video that I made, or maybe another video like on TikTok or something, but the anesthesia was like the scariest part for me. I was terrified to go under anesthesia because I didn't know what it was going to feel like coming out. Um, and it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but, um, he came in and spoke to us. He ended up leaving. Um, the nurses did come in and give us an IV. Um, my IV was right here in my arm. As you can tell, I don't have any bruising or anything like that. Um, this morning they took my IV out kind of early because I did have quite a bit of swelling right here and I still have a little bit, um, but all these marks are from like the adhesive. So, um, got my IV going and, um, things were good to go. 
So we were told by the doctor that as soon as Dr. Ortiz came in to speak with us, we were gonna be next. Um, and so a couple hours after that, probably around 7 p.m., um, Dr. Ortiz came in, he spoke with us. Hey, Dr. Ortiz, you're nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Where are you from, Ashley? Missouri. Missouri, okay. Is this for Dr. Ortiz? She's doing a meet her. She's gonna take out your drink tomorrow so that you start drinking. When you drink, you're only gonna be able to- um, He made a TikTok with me, which I'll insert right here for you guys to see. I'll do it myself. asked us about our health history, asked us, you know, how much weight we lost during the pre-op and stuff like that. And um, he was in and out pretty quickly, got done what he needed to do. And he's a busy man. So he went back and whew, that gas is unreal. I'm going to say that a lot in this video. He went back to do his thing to get ready for us. Um, and so I was taken first, the nurse came and she took my bag of fluids off of the, um, the holding rack thing. It's like a coat hook almost, but it's for your IV bag. She took that off, put it into my lap, um, wheeled me over to the ER or the OR, excuse me. And she put on, um, I had a bracelet with my name on it and all my information. And then they put on booties over my socks and a, um, head cover for my head, for my hair. And, um, then they took me back to like another kind of holding room. So it was kind of, a different, I don't know, it was kind of a different situation. And um, if you're like in the EOC bariatric group, you might hear people talking about this. It didn't bother me at all, but it was definitely a different situation. But you do get wheeled past a bunch of instruments, um, sometimes, not all the time, but I definitely seen like all. Okay, so keep in mind, this is me just finishing off what I just got done saying. So they wheeled me to the little holding area. And as we were going through, I did see like a whole table full of instruments that maybe just got sanitized or just was about to be sanitized. I'm not really sure. Nothing looked dirty or anything like that. Um, a little bit of a side note too, the surgical area in the hospital, every single hospital I was in was the most cleanest hospital, medical facility, whatever you want to call it, place I've ever been in. It was very clean, very sanitized. You can tell that they took a lot of pride um, in cleanliness and sanitation. So um, they took me to this little holding area and it was kind of weird because off to the right, you could see um, like the OR, like the two operating rooms or three operating rooms that they had. And then to the left where I was being wheeled, there was a bunch of people that just came out of anesthesia. There was like, I believe, three to four beds and they were all divided by a curtain um, and they put me all the way at the end and they had me get into one of the hospital beds and they covered me up. There was like a really nice snuggly blanket and I just kind of laid there and chilled. Um, one thing that I thought was a little bit weird though is to my right, there was a counter with a microwave um, and they were microwaving like plastic bottles of some type of solution. I don't know if it was like saline solution. Clean Surely it wasn't cleaning solution because that would have been really bad, but they were microwaving these bottles of something, um, probably just to like warm it up and make it more comfortable. I'm going to assume it was saline, maybe for the, um, maybe for the IV, but I'm not really sure, but they were microwaving it for like five minutes. And I just thought like, how strange is that? But again, like this is Mexico. This is not the U S things are done a lot different. Um, and I know in the U S they really guard you from a lot of things, right? So there's really nothing that you see that goes on behind the scenes out in the open. Um, so I thought that was interesting. It didn't bother me, but I just thought, you know, this is definitely different. I'm definitely in a different country because they do things so drastically different. So, um, so I got into my bed, I'm all snuggled up in my blanket. And of course, like I said, there was a bunch of other people to my left who had just gotten out of anesthesia. And let me just tell you, that was a trip because, it was almost terrifying, but at the same time, like I felt good because I knew what to expect, but people were dry heaving and coughing and I can hear the nurses like, wake up, wake up. There was this one specific guy. I remember his name was Jordan and I couldn't see him, of course, because there was a curtain dividing us, but there was a nurse audibly smacking him, Jordan, Jordan. Um, and it was just kind of funny. And he just, you know, like kept trying to wake him up basically. And the gist that I got was Jordan kept falling back asleep and then they'd start smacking him again, try to wake him up. So that was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, it was like slightly terrifying, but slightly comforting. Like, okay, this is like crazy that I'm hearing all of these people wake up and trying to like figure out, you know, and they're in pain too, because you do wake up in a little bit of pain, especially gas pain. But um, it was just interesting to me. I just laid there listening to all this and I'm thinking, holy crap, like this is horrible. But at the same time, I knew what to expect out of myself when I 
I came out of anesthesia, um, which by the way, I don't remember any of that type of stuff. Maybe I did that, maybe I didn't, but I have a strong feeling that I came out of anesthesia just like I was waking up from a nap. I was so calm and peaceful when I woke up from anesthesia. So anyway, I, um, I laid there for a little while and then after a few minutes, they actually wheeled my roommate in, which I thought was funny. Um, they put her at the foot of my bed in her wheelchair. Well, she actually ended up being taken back for surgery before me. Um, and I'm assuming it's because they want to get that wheelchair out of the way from my bed. So she went, she had her surgery. I waited a little bit longer and then I was told that it was my turn. So um, I got out of the hospital bed and I walked my happy self right into the operating room. They had me walk, you know, and it wasn't very far. It was like a couple rooms away. I walked into the operating room room um, and I was told to basically put myself up on the operating table which um, I expected because I had read in the EOC bariatric support group that that's like a thing but um, I was told to remove my arms from my gown so I went ahead and you, you are butt freaking naked for surgery by the way which like I still can't get over because it was literally a room full of male nurses my male doctor my male anesthesiologist but whatever or anesthesiologist um, whatever it's whatever I really don't don't care I'll never be back there again they'll never know who I am um, and they've probably seen way worse so just keep that in mind when it's you um, but yes they told me there was a little step stool they still told me to go ahead and step up onto the operating table so I did that um, and it was just a little you know navy blue operating table nothing special um, it was like kind of um, oh it's like it's like that rubbery material with fabric it definitely wasn't like a mattress or anything it was like kind of a firm um, you know, kind of squishy bed. So I laid there and of course they had those things to the side where you put your arms. And so I just did that and I chilled and the anesthesiologist came up to me and he was talking to me and making small talk. And, um, anyway, you know, after talking to him for a few minutes, I just kind of laid there looking at the ceiling. And then he said to me, he's like, well, are you ready? Do you have any questions? And I said, no, you're going to take care of me. Right. And he said, yeah. And literally you guys, the last thing I remember is just looking up at the ceiling and I was out like a light. And next thing I know, I'm being woken up and being told to get back into my hospital bed in my hospital room. Um, anesthesia is so weird, you guys. This is my first time with any experience of anesthesia. And I'll tell you, I was terrified. That was what worried me the most. However, before surgery, like earlier on in the day when my, um, my roommate Yanira and I were just sitting there, we were laughing because she's like, well, girl, she's like, have you ever had an epidural? And I'm like, yeah, I've had three epidurals. Thank God for epidurals, right? And she's like, well, really, when you think about it, you're willing, you're, you're allowing and willing someone to stab a needle into your spine, you're going to be fine for anesthesia, you know, so we just laughed about that, because how silly of me to worry about anesthesia when I would like willingly be like, yeah, jab me in the back with that long ass needle, please, um, to take away the pain of childbirth. So anyway, I had nothing to worry about. It was fine. I really, 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 truly, I have no recollection of waking up. I don't remember dry heaving or coughing or anything like that. Um, I remember waking up extremely peaceful and it was fine. And I remember being tired and I was kind of in and out of it. I was in a lot of pain. I had a lot of um, pain right here on my collarbone. I felt like I had gotten stabbed in the collarbone. Honestly, it was so painful, but that's just gas. Um, keep in mind, this is a laparoscopic surgery. So they actually blow your abdomen up with gas to allow space to, you know, get around in there. And so that was incredibly painful. Um, my abdomen definitely hurt as well. You know, I had all these incisions and I had just had surgery and um, I was sliced open five different times. So in my two week update, I'll actually show you guys my incisions and talk a little bit about aftercare as well. But um, I was in pain. I was in a, a good amount of pain. I'd say it was probably like an eight or a nine out of 10, but it was really just this. Um, and I'll tell you guys, do not forget it, your heating pad and if you have one of those massager guns that like boom, 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 punch you I put it right here and it was so good I didn't put it right on my collarbone I put it on like this kind of soft area right here um, and it worked really really well so that was nice um, and just honestly burping yourself like crazy like you guys seen me in the previous clip I did a lot of that um don't have to do that anymore luckily 12 days post-op I'm totally fine no more gas or anything like that I think it went away on like day five or six so it really didn't last that long um what else can I remember it's already been so long um I guess I could say like a couple hours after waking up out of anesthesia I was up out of bed um I remember getting 
getting up after being under anesthesia and waking up, I really don't think that I was awake enough to walk, but for whatever reason, by the grace of God, I made it to the bathroom and back because I had to pee so bad when I got out of surgery. They were pumping all these IVs through us and stuff. So I got up, used the restroom, um, and after that, I just walked. I walked a lot. At one point, I walked about 45 minutes. So I would probably get up and walk every hour, hour and a half. Um, at one point, I, I walked for about 45 minutes because I called my mom. I talked to her for 30 minutes as I walked the hallways back and forth. Um, and then I called my dad and talked to him for like 15 minutes. I called my husband at one point in time. So um, a lot of walking is necessary. Take your little wheelie majigger. Um, I'll insert some clips right here. You guys have probably already been watching it. I'll probably um, insert it a little bit earlier. But you guys see I'm walking back and forth, dragging that stupid thing around. That was so annoying, but it was definitely necessary. Um, just walk. That is my biggest tip for you is just walk. I know that it hurts. I know that it's uncomfortable, but walking will really will allow you to release a lot of that gas. So shoot, what else can I remember? It's been so long already. Um, it's like a blur. Like I sit here right now, 12 days post-op and I've been home now for, um, a week and a day. So eight days. And I really can't believe that like I literally traveled to Tijuana, Mexico by myself, had weight loss surgery, and then I came home and now like life is back to normal. I'm taking my kids to school, cleaning my house, cooking the whole nine. You know, it's just, it's just wild to me that it's already over. But um, what else, what else, what else? Just walking, walking, walking. Um, the drain tube, let's talk about the drain tube, you guys. That was a trip. I will insert a video here in just a second. I will give you a warning right before I play it. Um, it's about maybe 20 to 30 seconds long. So if you guys want to skip ahead, this is your one and only warning. Um, it is somewhat graphic. It's not like bloody or gory or anything like that, but it might make you a little bit woozy. So the drain tube came out the next morning. Um, they weren't supposed to remove it. Well, I guess they removed it at like noon, but they said they weren't going to do it until like 2.30, which was a freaking treat. The, the doctor came in. She's like, hey, do you want me to remove your tube? And we're like, yes, please. Because the drain tube, you guys, was so uncomfortable. It, it had such weird pressure in your abdomen. Um, mine was all the way to the left of my stomach, which I'm assuming is where everyone when it, where everyone's goes. Um, and I get asked this question a lot too, so let me address it. The purpose of the drain tube, you guys, is just this long plastic rubber tube, whatever, with like a bulb, okay? And it creates a natural suction with the bulb and the tube. And it's actually um, meant to remove any like fluid or blood buildup. It's actually really great. I was reading about it earlier today. It's good for like preventing infection, inflammation, and just kind of um, promotes healing a lot more too. So there is a good reason for it. Not every surgeon uses a drain tube, but Dr. Ortiz does. So um, yeah, so right now in like five seconds, I'm gonna play this video. So if you guys want to skip ahead, go for it. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me breathe, let me breathe. Is it just one more pull? Yeah. Okay. Oh, shoot, that's weird. Oh, my God. Tina was right. It felt like a snake. Oh. Yes, a little bit. Oh, that was the weirdest thing I've ever felt in my life. Oh, thank you. Oh my God. Wasn't that a trip? It felt like a literal snake coming out of your body. It was disgusting. The most disgusting, nastiest feeling I've ever felt in my life. It was the strangest thing ever. Um, it was definitely a relief. Once it was removed, it's like you could take a deep breath and you could do like deep breathing exercise. It was just, it was just so different. Um, they don't stitch your drain tube hole or anything like that since it is so small, but it just kind of crusts over and scabs and it heals just fine. So um, what else, what else? Drain tube, that was it. We we ended up, um, you know, just walking, 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 walking. We ended up getting like apple juice and ice chips and popsicles and stuff like that. Some people um, on other floors, they got jello. We were never offered jello. I don't think that I would have wanted to stomach jello anyway. Um, but the popsicle, the juice, and the ice chips were 
amazing like so good especially after that whole day like we I think it was like what eight eight and a half hours because I didn't have surgery till 8 30 and I had to stop drinking anything at noon so eight and a half hours nine hours or so I was without any fluids I was definitely very thirsty so the ice was amazing um but yeah just a lot of walking you know staying hydrated stuff like that um that's basically it the next day we left around um it was in the morning time I can't remember exactly what time it was maybe like maybe like 10 a.m maybe 11 or so we ended up leaving the hospital I can't exactly remember but they took us back to the hotel um and oh let me let me say this real quick um we did we did have to, okay, so after they said, okay, it's time to leave, we went back downstairs to the front desk um, and everyone who had just had surgery um, kind of stood there and waited for their name to be called and they present you with a hospital bill. Just says Baja Hospital, has your name on it, hospital bill, um, it has the date. So my check-in was February 26th and my checkout was February 28th. Um, and then these are extra costs. So I just want to make you guys aware that sometimes there is extra costs associated with your hospital stay. So I had to um, I had to Google what these things were because they're all in Spanish. My hospital bill, thankfully, was only $36, but I did see some hospital bills that were tremendously more. Um, so I know that I had to get extra oxygen, um, some kind of pain medicine, and I forget what the last one was, but it was like pain associated. So um, I don't really remember asking for extra pain medicine, which is kind of like, uh, you know, is that legit? Did I really need it? Um, I don't really know, but it is what it is. You get what you get, I guess. Um, I couldn't really fight it or anything or question it because I don't speak Spanish, but um, you know, I'm just going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that I probably did need it, but that was $36. So I had to pay for that. Um, and then upon leaving, they also give you, I can't remember if this was at the hospital or if this was at the EOC office at the hotel, but I'll go ahead and show you real quick. Um, they do give you this packet, um, and it includes your, your leak test. Oh, that's right. The leak test. Let me tell you about that real quick. That's the one thing I was forgetting. You do a leak test the day after surgery. So that's right. So I went down and did my leak test at like 9am the day after surgery. So it was like 12 hours post op. Um, and I'll insert some footage here for you guys. But basically, it's just this big machine that you stand upon. This thing right here, this tube looking thing is my new stomach you guys um you do the leak test you have to drink this purple liquid um up in your hospital room and then you go down for your leak test um and they have you drink a clear liquid that tasted horrible the most awful thing you'll ever taste in your whole life going around me i'm gonna use the, the tube okay the test, but you can, can i hold it yeah, okay cool does this need to be like with me yes your back is gonna be here oh my back yes And then you have to drink it all in one swig and then they will run it on like their CT scan machine majigger thing. Um, and he actually watches like the liquid travel through your new stomach. So you'll get this. I can't remember if it was there or if it was at the EOC office in the hotel. Um, and then you also get this CD and I believe, gosh, I sure wish that this was, um, 
this was like my surgery. Gosh, I wish it was my surgery. I haven't watched it yet, so I really don't know what it is, but I have a feeling it's just my CT scan um, that was done when I first arrived in Mexico that first day. So I got all that. Um, I did keep my little, my little hospital bracelet here. It just, it's funny. It's just, you know, in the U.S., there's just, there's just so many bells and whistles in the U.S. This is really simple. Patient, Ashley Gilligan, age 31, uh, what surgery? Manga gastrica, that's the VSG, and then, um, allergias negades which means nothing and then it just says dr ortiz 226 22 so just super simple um identifies me and i'm going to keep this forever just as like a little souvenir so um okay leak test went downstairs got the hospital bill um left went to the eoc office in the hotel we got our keys basically and we were free to go from there so that was basically surgery day you guys i hope i didn't forget anything um, all right, you guys, I am outside getting some fresh air. It's like 75 degrees right now, and I figured I would just give you this beautiful view. Um, this hotel is right butted up to the golf course, and it's so beautiful. Everything is so lush and green. Um, this is, I don't know what floor this is. I guess it's not too high up because that's the hotel. Maybe it's like the second or third floor, but they've got cabanas at the pool. So beautiful. Oh, I'm trying to work off some gas right now. Oh, this sucks. But I'm doing good. Trucking along, I promise. Just trying to walk as much as I can. It does not feel good to be balled up in that hospital bed or that hotel bed. Oh, there goes a burp. Excuse me. Look at that beautiful tree. Oh my god, it looks like a giant pineapple. You're joking me. Oh my god, I can't wait to show the kids. How cute. All right. Giant pineapple tree, check. We've got all these lawn chairs that I'll probably lay out out here later. Not sure what's going on here, but. All right, you guys, I have been discharged from the hospital and I'm back in my hotel um, for the next couple of days. This is a different hotel room, so I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a tour. Pretty much the same setup. Um, this one actually came with a robe and slippers, which is super fun. So um, that is just a little linen closet. And then I'm not exactly sure. Okay, so it's an adjoining door to a different hotel room. And right here is the bathroom. And this one actually has a um, stand-up shower, whereas the other one had a bathtub. And I'm assuming that, that they do this on purpose for um, patients who just had surgery. So really appreciate that. Um, handicap accessible, I guess is what you'd call it. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is a lot more stuff than I got in the other room. How nice. Of course, the toilet. They've got the nice little... Um, handles and stuff here and a little shower chair that's gonna feel amazing to take a shower because I'm definitely sore um, this room comes with a mini fridge which is cool the other one did not um, and a little bit of a different setup so the TV is in here I'll show you guys the view in just a second there's this cute little chair with the desk and then looks like I got a trash can and a bed and the view. The view is not as pretty as the other view, I'm not going to lie, but something new to look at. Um, right down here is the Fonda Argentina restaurant that I told you guys about in my last video, and it's really good. It's got the beef broth, and if you have a companion come with you for surgery, they have amazing like steak and stuff, or so I hear. I smelled it, so it must be good. Um, Sam's Club, Carl's Jr., Subway's down there, just a bunch of different little restaurants, Michelin Tires. So that is the view, and I'm doing pretty good. Oh, they don't have a long mirror in here. They don't have a long mirror. That's a problem. Dang it. Just have to check myself in the mirror in there. But anyway, that's if my If you have any room. questions in regards to the surgery or anything that I talked about in this video, please comment them down below. I would love it if you guys could subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. Um, I really support, like, what? I really support you. I do support you, but I really appreciate your support as well. Um, if you guys want to go and follow me on TikTok, please do so. And very soon, I'm going to actually be opening up a Facebook support group. So if you guys are interested in joining that, comment below. You will need to add me as a friend on Facebook. So friend me on Facebook. Just find me, Ashley Gilligan. Um, send me a private message and let me know that you're interested in joining my bariatric support group. And I'll make sure to get you added into that when I get it all set up. So if you guys have any questions comment below I already said that what else can I say I guess I could just say bye um thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in my next video
Bye, guys.